Hello everyone. We are starting with Meeting Cezanne, written by Sir Michael Morpego. Michael Morpego is an English author, poet and playwright, and he is best known for his novels and stories for children, many of which have been made into films. Between the years 2003 and 2005, he was named Children's Laureate of the United Kingdom. He has won several awards for his work. Flipping through his mother's book, a young boy named Yannick admires the beauty of the countryside of Provence, as painted by the master painter Cezanne. One summer, he gets the chance to go and spend time with his uncle's family who live there. Yannick soon begins to enjoy his stay, occasionally helping his uncle run the village inn. One day, there is a bazil at the inn for a famous man, the inn's best customer, comes visiting. Who is this man and why is he there such a fuss about his visit? Uh, let's see. That evening, my cousin Amanda told me I had to do everything properly because their best customer was coming to dine with the same friends. He lived in the chateau in the village, she said, and was very famous when I asked what he was famous for. She didn't reply. The chateau means a large French country home or castle. It's just like a bangla. Okay. And the meaning of bustle is noisy, excited act, uh, activity or movement. And Cezanne was a French painter who was a great influence on many artists of the 20th century. Provence, a region in southeastern France famous for its scenery. Questions always questions. She tutter. The meaning of tutter is made a sound expressing annoyance. So she don't want to reply to Yannick. Okay, go and fetch the locks. So she told him to fetch the locks. Whoever he was, he looked like an ordinary man without much hair. But I felt very pleased when the famous man at one of my creamy brulees, a French dessert consisting of custard and topped with a layer of sugar. Uh, after the man and his girls left, we began to clear the table. I pulled the paper tablecloths off, scrunched it and threw it into the fire as usual. Suddenly, a man went rushing past me. For some reason, she grabbed the tongs and tried to pull out the remnants, remnants of the burning paper tablecloth. But it was already too late. Then she turned to me. You fool! She shouted. You little fool! What? I said. That... That man who just left us our drawing on the tablecloth as a tip for Papa if he likes his meal. You went and threw it in the fire? He is the most famous painter in the world, idiot. She was in tears now. Everyone in the restaurant stopped eating and went silent. Then Uncle Bruno came striding towards us, unlikely his jolly self. What's it? He asked Amante. It was, it was Yannick, Papa, she cried. He threw it into the fire, the tablecloth, the drawing. Did you tell him about it, Amante? Uncle Bruno asked. Did Yannick know that he sketches something on the tablecloth and leaves it behind for us? Amanda looked at me. Her cheeks were with tears. I thought she was going to lie, but she didn't. No, Papa, she said, 
lowering her head. Then you shouldn't blame him. Should you force something that was your fault? Says sorry to Yannick now. She mumbled it but didn't raise her eyes. Uncle Bruno put his arm around me. Now, my Yannick, he said. He said he particularly liked his cream brulee. You made it, didn't you? So the drawing was for you, really. Always look on the bright side. Always look on the bright side. Look for good things in a bad situation. For a moment, you had a drawing that was made for you by the greatest painter in the world. That's something you'll never. Later on, as I came out of the bathroom, I heard Amanda crying in her room. I hated to hear her cry, so I knocked on the door and went in. I'm sorry, I said. I didn't mean to upset you. She had stopped crying by now. Uh, it was not your fault, Yannick, she said, still sniffing a bit. Uh, it's just that I hate when it, I hate it when Papa scrolls with me. He hardly ever is. Only when I have done something really bad. I shouldn't have blamed you. I'm sorry. Then she smiled at me. I lay awake all night, my mind racing. Somehow I was going to make it all right again and make Amanda happy. Soon I had worked out exactly what and how to do it, even what I was going to say when the time came in. When the time at the right time. I didn't go for my walk in the hills but made my way down. Through the village she wore the statue. I waited till there was no one about. I climbed the gates easily enough and then ran down through the trees. The surrounded by the was tenfrattering forest on all sides was the old man with very little hair who had come to the inn. He was sitting along on the steps in the sunshine and sketching. I approached as silently as I could, but somehow I must have disturbed him. He looked up, shading his eyes against the sun. Hello, young man, he said. Now that was that I was this close to him, I could see he was indeed very old, but his eyes were bright and searching. Are you Monsieur Cézanne? Monsieur means a word in French for the title Mr. The famous painter? I asked. He seemed a little puzzled, so I went on. My mother says you are the greatest painter in the world. He smiled and then laughed. I think your mother's probably right, he said. You clearly have a wise mother. But why did she let a young lad like you come wandering here on his own? I explained why I would come and what I wanted. He looked at me with furrowed bronze and said, I remember you now from the last night. Of course, I'll draw another picture for Bruno. But would he like? No. Better still, what would you like? I uh, I like uh, sailing boats, I said. Can you do boats? I'll try, he replied with a smile. It didn't take him long. He drew fast. No one's looking up. But as he worked, he asked me about where I had seen sailing boats, about where I lived in Paris. He said, he would love he loved Paris and sailing boats too. The he said wearing the sheet from his sketchbook and showing me what do you think four sailing boats were racing over the sea out and beyond a lighthouse, just as 
I had seen them in Brittany, but I saw he'd sign it in Picasso. I thought your name was Suzanne. I said. He smiled at, at me. How I wish it was. He said sadly. Then he added, "Off you go now." So, actually, Yannick met the great painter, the great artist, Picasso. But he thought that he wanted to meet Cezanne, as his mother said. So, that was the lesson: meeting Cezanne.